the company called Xreal have now upgraded one of their most popular products, the Nreal Air or the Xreal Air. So they used to be called Nreal before they made a name change last year. So we're going to be checking out the Xreal Air 2 Pro in today's video. Now the Air 2 Pro is only a slight bit of an upgrade over the Air 2, which is the upgrade from the original Xreal Air. The one upgrade from the Air 2 over to the Air 2 Pros is something called electrochromatic dimming. Now this provides three different levels of dimming, so you don't need the light shield any longer when you wanna black out these glasses. Now that's one of my favorite things to do when using the glasses is to have them completely blacked out so you only have light coming in from the sides. If electrochromatic dimming is not important to you, then the regular Air 2s are going to be just fine because the difference between the both of them is just the electrochromatic dimming, nothing else. Let's go ahead and check out why I think every handheld gamer needs to try out the Xreal Air 2 Pro with their gaming device. So for a premium price, what you get are a pair of the Xreal Air 2 Pro sitting inside a nice carry case alongside a braided USB Type-C cable. You also get a couple of replacement nose pads which have been upgraded, a light shield which has also been upgraded, a prescription lens frame, and a cleaning cloth. Now, these were pretty much the same things that I got with the original Air, so no new additions here. Taking a closer look at the Air 2 Pro right next to the original Air, you'll notice a lot of similarities in the hardware and the overall design used for both. First off, the Air 2 Pro still looks very conventional and can still easily be mistaken for normal glasses when viewed from afar. They're also still very lightweight and super comfortable to wear for extended periods. The Air 2 Pro also uses a new graphite gray color which gives it sort of a more premium look and feel especially when placed side by side with the original in glossy black. The temples and the hinges on both glasses look almost identical with only a few differences between the two. Both hinges can be adjusted between three lock points to find the best viewing angle for different people. You can also stretch both temples outwards to fit different face sizes. Just like the original, the Air 2 Pro also comes with two buttons located below the right temple. There's a short button for turning the display on or off and a long one which is there for controlling volume and screen brightness. The display button now has an additional function on the Air 2 Pro being able to enable switching between three dimming levels using the new electrochromatic feature of the glasses. Keep in mind though that this is a feature that is exclusive to the Pro model of the Air 2 and the only thing that differentiates it from the regular model. The last thing of note is both glasses use the same USB Type-C port which is located at the tip of the left temple to connect to external devices. They also have no built-in battery so they do draw a bit of battery or power from whatever device they're connected to. The light shield cover has also seen a complete overhaul to where it now looks a lot less like an actual cover and more like a tinted shade for the lenses. In other words, the Air 2 Pro still looks like normal sunglasses even with the light shield on. The new carry case for the Air 2 and the Pro model is also much better than the one from the original. The locking system on the new one uses a hard closed locking and unlocking system which I think works so much better. Overall, the new case feels more rigid and premium and is definitely a nice upgrade for a device you'll probably be traveling around with a fair bit. On the original Air, there was a single speaker under each temple, which together sounded pretty average to be honest. On the Air 2 Pro, there's now a total of four speakers that provide a much better listening experience through directional audio. It's much easier to understand how much better directional audio is by trying it out yourself. So you're gonna have to do this in person to understand what I'm saying. Now, don't get me wrong. The new sound system definitely works better, but I still think the bass on it is pretty weak. For the best sound and audio possible and for private listening, I'd still recommend looking into external devices like a headset or some earbuds. Now, being able to use a massive 1080p private screen is arguably the best reason to pick up one of these AR glasses, so a display upgrade is always something to be happy about. The Air 2 Pro has now been upgraded to use Sony's 0.55 micro OLED panels which are built right into its lenses. This means the screen can now get up to 25% brighter than the originals with better contrast and overall colors. In comparison to the original Air, I can confirm that the Air 2 Pro is noticeably brighter and definitely has a better overall image quality. 
The brighter OLED display also means that the glasses will be more usable in the daytime when there's lights always creeping in from the sides. The glasses also come with a default resolution and refresh rate of 1080p and 60Hz with the ability to get up to 120Hz, which is really nice especially for gaming. As for the screen size, the glasses can project up to a 330 inch display in front of a user when wearing them, but that isn't without some limitations which I will explain more as we go. Electrochromatic dimming is one of the newest features of the Air 2 Pro and definitely my favorite thing about it. This allows a user to dim the glasses internally between three preset levels with just the push of a button. It's definitely much stealthier than using the light shield to achieve the same effect. This could also mean one less item to carry around with you when using the glasses. And this is a definite boost in the portability of the device. Now, when compared to using the light shield cover, the dimming features honestly works just as well. I noticed that the light shield cover only adds a tiny bit more dimming effect. Without them on, I was able to achieve close to the same effect with the highest dimming preset. A step down to the next dimming preset provided a nice balance between being able to see my surroundings and still be able to see the display clearly. Below that, I could still see the display, but I definitely had to strain my eyes a lot more for it. There's a few ways to use the glasses with gaming handhelds and any other device. The easiest and most seamless method that I found is through a wired connection between the glasses and the source device using the provided braided USB-C cable. Now, when connected directly to a device that has a USB-C port with DisplayPort support, the glasses go straight into aircasting mode, which functions exactly like an external monitor. Aircasting turns the Air 2 Pro into a giant display for the device that's connected to it. I've definitely found this to be the simplest and the quickest way to use the glasses with your device since it only requires a single connection to work. Now keep in mind that this mode comes with some limitations. First off, the screen size is now capped at about 130 inch, but to be honest, that's still a lot of screen real estate. They also can't be used for anything else besides screencasting when in this mode. To unlock AR and MR features, you'll need an additional item like the Beam or a certified Android phone. To use them for screencasting with any device without display port over USB-C, you'll need the beam as well or an adapter or a splitter that performs a similar function. Another limitation of aircasting mode is the lack of control over things like the screen size or the screen positioning. To unlock more screen modes, again, you'll need the beam. Even with all of its limitations, aircasting still remains my number one and honestly really the only way that I use the glasses. The Air 2 Pro can be used with almost every gaming handheld with a USB Type-C port with the only exceptions being ones without DisplayPort functionality. The Switch is the only handheld device that I know of that has a USB Type-C port without DisplayPort so the glasses don't work directly with it. To use it with the Air 2 Pro, you'll need the beam or a similar adapter to act as a bridge to the Switch which makes for honestly a much less portable setup. The Air 2 Pro has quickly become one of my favorite accessories to use with the Steam Deck as well as other handhelds. It offers a whole new way to experience gaming on deck with a higher resolution and a higher refresh rate display. The LCD model of the Steam Deck has a screen capped at 720p and 60Hz while the OLED version is capped at the same resolution but a higher refresh rate of 90Hz. Regardless of the fact that the OLED model comes with a really nice display, I mean, it's still only 7.4 inches in size. Using the Air 2 Pro with the Steam Deck takes that all the way up to 130 inches, which is insane and great for a more immersive experience. So Windows-based handhelds like the ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go might require jumping into the display settings to tweak a few things like resolution and refresh rate upon first connection. You may also want to turn off the handheld's display from there, making the glasses the only active one in order to preserve battery. Gaming in aircasting mode with 7840U devices was a bit better since I was able to maximize the native 1080p resolution of the glasses without putting on additional stress for the handheld. Now keep in mind that all of these devices will still suffer from poor battery life even when used with the Air 2 Pro. Devices like the Win Mini or the Legion Go that come with an extra USB-C port work really well here since you can keep them connected to power while simultaneously using the glasses. Devices like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally only come with one USB Type-C port, so they won't be able to stay connected to power 
while being used with the glasses. I'm sure you can probably find some third party adapter or splitter out there that can help with this issue, but then again, that becomes one more thing to carry around. If you have one of the new iPhones with USB-C, then you'll be glad to know that it can also be paired with the glasses for air casting using a single cable. This process requires an additional adapter to work with iPhones that have a lightning port. If you've got an Android phone, on the other hand, with USB-C port that also supports DisplayPort, then you can also expect the glasses to work with it flawlessly in air casting mode. Whichever phone you have, as long as it works with the glasses over USB-C, it opens up a door to many more ways that you can enjoy using them. You can now play mobile games, surf the web, or watch movies from a streaming app all on a giant display. This can easily make the glasses great as a travel or a bedtime companion. Let's quickly check out the X-Real Beam. Now, this is an accessory that can be picked up and paired alongside any of the X-Real Air glasses to unlock way more ways to use them. It's a small device with buttons on the front and the sides of it. It's got two USB Type-C ports which work well for multiple use cases and one of those is being able to charge the beam while connected to the glasses for continuous usage. One port is labeled in for connecting different video input sources like the switch for example, while the other port is labeled out for connecting directly to the glasses. The beam comes with a built-in battery that can last up to three hours on a full charge and can also charge up very quickly. Once you have it connected to the glasses, it becomes the brain of the device, allowing the glasses to function without any other device. With the beam connected, the Air 2 Pro gains access to three new spatial viewing modes. The first one is called Smooth Follow, and it's designed to minimize image movements caused by your physical environment, like when you're in a vehicle, for example. Body Anchor is next, and this locks the screen in place, regardless of head movements, as long as your body remains in the same spot. The only way the screen moves here is when the entire body is moving. The last mode is called side view and this shrinks the display and moves it to the side in order to avoid interfering with your line of sight while still being able to watch something using the glasses. You can download a bunch of multimedia apps on the beam like Netflix and more but the installation process for new apps may be a bit daunting for most people. To add a new app you will need to download the files on the computer and then load them onto the beam for use. The glasses can also be used with HDMI devices, but to be honest, I wouldn't pick up one of these to use primarily with one. The reason for that is because you'll need more accessories to make that setup work. In conclusion, what I'm saying is if you own a Steam Deck or any Windows based handheld device with DisplayPort over USB-C, then Air 2 or the Pro model might be worth checking out. Of course, this is as long as you're okay with the caveats it comes with. It could easily be the perfect accessory for somebody who travels a lot and wants something they can pair with multiple portable devices like a smartphone or a gaming handheld console. It's certainly a unique way to experience any device and no footage I can film can really capture what I'm able to see but I highly recommend trying it out for yourself if you're interested in this kind of tech. Now that's all I got for you guys in this one. I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions about the Air 2 Pro or the Beam, you can leave it down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get to it. I've also left links to both items down in the description box. Thank you guys for watching as always and I look forward to catching you in my next video. It's Tommy and I'm out y'all.